Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to iView Live. I'm Andy Price, and I'm very privileged to introduce you to Suki Asi, who's a senior economist from Flock, live in studio today. Welcome, Suki. How are you doing? Hi. Thank you so much for having me here, Andy. No problem at all. No, it's great to have you. And um, we've got quite a lot to talk about over the next sort of the 30 minutes or so. Um, so I think we should start by explaining what we're doing here. Um, obviously, you're a senior economist for Flock. So the, the focus of this interview is around ergonomics. But we're going to go into something a little bit more kind of relevant, I think, with the, with the recent kind sure. of changes to, to, to lockdowns and things like that. Um, so really, um, Wyvern have been involved with, with ergonomics as a company for sort of 15 years or so in terms of assessment and supply and provision of equipment. So um, we've seen some shifts in that time, um, but ultimately we're, we're providing equipment to make people much more comfortable in whatever environment they're in. Um, so we thought we'd get you in as a senior ergonomist for Flock um, yeah. to, to really delve into that and, and just see what sort of shifts you've seen over the years and, and find out a little bit about you as well. So um, just to begin with, we'll, we'll play our promo video um, for, for Wyvern just to explain sort of what, what we do and then we'll come on to maybe what you do in more detail. Perfect. Wyvern is proud to present our range of ergonomic equipment allowing you to design a working environment around an individual. Wyvern are partners with a selection of ergonomic chair manufacturers, allowing us to supply a range of customizable, fully adjustable chairs, from footrests, to desks, monitor raisers, armrests, ergonomic mice and keyboards all help to increase comfort and reduce body stress. An effective ergonomic adjustment that can be made is through the use of a height adjustable desk. By allowing a desk to change heights a user can use it while seated or standing allowing for a range of working positions which will help to boost productivity. So whether at work or at home, Wyvern have the solution to all your ergonomic needs. If you would like further information, please visit our website. And we're back. What do you think of the uh, the video, Suki? Yeah, it was excellent. It was very thorough. I think it gives a holistic approach of of what ergonomics is about. It's yeah. you know making sure that you're fitting your equipment to make sure that ultimately you're feeling comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's what we try and achieve with with sort of videos and, and promotional videos. It can't be too long that you get bored. It <laughs> needs to get the message across, and I think it does does that. I mean, hopefully um, everybody's got an idea of what what, what we even do, what what we can do. Um, but obviously, it's not all about us. So <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and your role at, at Flock? Sure. Um, so I am the senior ergonomist at Flock. Uh, Flock is the house of brands. It looks after several different brands, Horg, BMA, RH, some of the ones that are quite common within our industry mm. and within the realms of ergonomics. Um I, I am an ergonomist first and foremost, and 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 actually, when I speak to people about my title, they often think that I say economist, yeah. and I have to politically correct them very very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but you know, w with with the line of ergonomics, I um, you have to study it. But before I fell into ergonomics, I studied. I studied um, industrial design as an undergraduate right, okay. degree at Brunel, and. When you're designing products, you have to design them throughout a whole design process. So you look at the start, the middle and the end. Yeah. But ultimately, products are designed for people. So you have to make sure that you're, you've got the right target audience. You're testing your products thoroughly. Mm. So off I went to do a placement in the air at Fira International, which is um, okay. the UK's largest test house. Yeah. And they had a very small ergonomics division. But there I was able to actually work within the team to to really see how ergonomics is integrated 
at the start of the design process. So looking into the conceptual processes um, and then all the way through to the user test and then mm. actually see it, seeing it being produced. Um, however, you can't call yourself an ergonomist unless you've studied it. Mm. So I went back to university and studied ergonomics as a master's at Nottingham. Oh, wow. OK. So, so, um, so d- uh, we know we, we know what ergonomics is. You would not more than anyone. But for, for anybody watching that doesn't really know what ergonomics is, what's your definition of ergonomics? Um, so ergonomics, I think the definition differs from ergonomist to ergonomist, but the messaging is, is still the same. Um, to me, as a subject matter, it's, it's, it's a science. So it's the science behind how things work. But it's a multidisciplinary approach to achieving a good fit between people, the tasks they do, yeah. the tools they use in the environment in which they work. So so often people people always, when they think of ergonomics, they associate it with someone having a bad back. Yeah. Um, but it's beyond that. And when I try to visually or conceptually try to explain it, the best way I do it is um, explaining it against a wood turning lathe or a metal turning lathe. Mm. And the machinery or the components on the machinery are quite low down and they're, and they're quite sparse. So you're having to move from one end to the other. So if you had to change the human to interact with the product, then you probably have a four and a half foot tall man with an arm span of about eight feet. So a little or- orangutan person walking around. So it's it's about fitting the task to the worker. Yeah. So it's easier to fix what you've got in front of you rather than the person. Yeah. Um, when it comes to office ergonomics, um, especially, I always say, again, it's about fitting the task to the worker because your posture at your work station is driven by two things is driven by your vision and it's driven by your reach so your hands with your keyboard and your mouse positioning and your vision with your eyes and where your screens are mm-hmm. so when your work tools are you know placed too high or at awkward angles that's what drives you forward yeah, you know absolutely. that's what drives you forward breaking the contact between your own back and the backwards of the chair yeah. um, but the first thing when someone thinks about ergonomics is they think of bad back and they blame the chair yeah. but it's everything so around more. us and there's ergonomics in every area isn't it it's not just the, when we, we we're talking specifically about offices and sure. office work but there's ergonomics in every part of design ultimately otherwise things wouldn't fit and I think my my definition, when people say, oh, what, 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 are you t- what are you talking about? What's ergonomics? Well, ergonomics to me is the fit between people and the items we use, whatever that is. Ultimately, in an office, it's this is the biggest part of, of what we do. Yeah. We sit in a chair for however long a day, and that's probably the biggest cause of problems. Mm-hmm. But in, in general, I mean, for instance... Um, there's ergonomics in in cars, otherwise they wouldn't be very comfortable. There's ergonomics in, in items we use. Um, and I often use the analogy that if my cup was square, made of lead with no handle on it, it'd be <laughs> pretty useless. Um, so there are ergonomics in every area, isn't there? Absolutely. So you've got um, you've got medical, you've got industrial, you've got automotive, you've got um, commercial side, which extends to office design. Mm. I always say where where you've got people you'll always need ergonomics yeah. you you get the definition of the mug and i often use the same one because yeah. everything is designed for the human person from like the mug we use to the door we walk through everything is designed through proportions yeah. and usability so for example when you're born um you're put in a crib to the sad reality of when you pass away and you're in a in a coffin that's fit for purpose so mm everything is designed with looking at human needs and requirements so where you've got the um, automotive industry um, human factors started um, in in aviation yeah and they did a study that found before going to war how how people were operating using these control panels yeah. so they were in this massive room and you know all, all, all the knobs and levers were kind of sparsely spread out um but they found that a simple task needed someone to go from one end of the control room to the other end and there was no logical pattern behind it so they found that pilots were actually dying more so when they were in the air during the test period than they were dying actually at war because of the um I guess the 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 lack of ergonomics or the, the, the usability, the poor conditions and everything else that comes around it, and that's Absolutely. another thing. It's, it's it's holistic as well, isn't it? It's not just about the the, the item you're using. It's about everything else that's connected with that. Um, and I think you hit the nail on the head the head there, really. When 
when we when we talk about the importance of ergonomics, and that is the importance really, um, as you say, because that can be life or death in that in that environment in that situation. Absolutely, uh, and and that that's the that's the sad reality is that in hospitals. Um, you know, a, a lot of patient records are still um, on paper. Mm. So at the end of the bed, you'll see a, a, a paper flip chart with people, you know, when they when the patients have had their medication mm. and so forth. But when the introduction of um, medicine dispensing, dispensing carts came into a ward, nurses and doctors were really apprehensive about using this piece of equipment because they thought that it would be so different to um, working and kind of getting through their day to day because they've got so many things to do. Um, However, with ergonomics and technology kind of intertwined, change is necessary in order to make sure that you're being productive but in the right way. So what they were finding using the medical example um, was that Nurses have to go from a patient ward to a medicine dispensing cupboard and go back and forth. Mm. So not only are you wasting time, but also you can get incorrect um, medicine dispensing yeah. to to a person, which in that case is definitely, definitely a, a death. death. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, whenever I think about ergonomics, there's always a level of reluctancy from people who don't want to adopt uh, a, a new way or new technology where it can help so you. So there can be still a ste- scepticism about ergonomics. I mean, I, I, m- many, many years ago, when Wyvern f- first got introduced, um, or sort of first introduced ourselves into ergonomics and, and doing assessments and providing equipment, it was very much seen as a bit of a black art. People didn't really understand ergonomics. And I think that's changed re- more recently. I don't know if you've seen a, a sort of shift in, in absolutely, attitude. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that high... I, I, I think... Post-COVID has had such an impact on how people um, are, are actually more considerate to what more they need aware to do. More of, of, of everything they do, yeah. Exactly, because I think prior to that, companies would often associate ergonomics with um, D- DSC assessments, so mm. display screen equipment assessments, which often get done as a t- tick box activity. So it was almost part of a, a risk assessment, if you like, health and safety, and, and, and it was kind of all bundled in with that, wasn't it? Exactly, and I think when you're a new starter, you're given this form and you have to fill. And I think a lot, the, a lot of the messaging sometimes just gets overlooked because they just see it as something that they have to do and it's mandatory and they don't really see anything coming off the back of it unless it's done properly. Mm. And so with now you're in a setup when you're at home, you're working from your sofa, you're working from the dining table, you're in shared spaces, working from beds, you know, you name it, people have been working in all sorts of, of, of weird and functional ways. Mm. And now they're looking around them and actually being like, oh, I've been sat on my sofa for too long and I feel yeah. uncomfortable. I need to do something about yeah. it. And that's how subtly ergonomics has very organically and very naturally just come into place without the term ergonomics being used. Yeah. Because unfortunately, the term ergonomics um, was, I think there was a period of time where it was just thrown around like a buzzword. Yeah. Everyone was just trying to put an ergonomic stamp on their product because um, it, it, it made it sound as if it was unique and so forth. The, the ergonomics industry isn't a regulated industry unfortunately and what that means is that you can have a lot of those products that come into the market that might not necessarily assist you Mm. but um you know people are more aware about what they should be doing and you know they're on google trying to look for you know wrist rests or palm supports foot rests new tar seating yeah and they're actually doing that without actually knowing, as you mentioned, it, they're not necessarily knowing they're, they're being ergonomically sort of sound. And yeah. they're just looking for something that makes them more comfortable. And they just happen to be using an ergonomic designed keyboard or Ex- mouse or whatever that may be. Exactly. Um, it's known as different things that are in different areas as well, isn't it? Isn't it human factors and mecha- um, human... You were engineering, you Correct. mentioned a little bit earlier. So, so you've got a lot of the, um, there's a lot of usability. So it's uh, within um, ergonomics, there's a couple of components within that reach. So you've got um, biomechanics, which is the study of um, how our body moves to interact with products. Yeah. And then you've got anthropometry, which is the study of our body dimensions. Yeah. So again, I used the the, the crib to um, coffin example, yeah. but um, but that that's very apt within 
ergonomics. Um, you've got psychology, which is a study of, of your mind. And then you've got psychosocial well-being, which is something that not a lot of people consider. However, it's probably been one of the most important things, especially since people have been working from home. And that's about the psychosocial well-being of a person that extends beyond products, yeah. um, environment, lighting, temperature, everything. Things that, that can change your mood and change your attitude and change your outlook on things. Absolutely. Yeah. And mental health falls within that remit. And unfortunately, um, there was a period in time where I went from doing ergonomic assessments that were f- about the physical body mm. and about the products in front of you to the mind, the psychosocial mm. well-beings that were looking into all these other factors that were impacting the way that people were working. Yeah. Um, and that's what I've seen be b- b- probably be one of the, the main aspects that have really arisen since people have been at uh, home. Yeah, and that's interesting. I think they go co- quite, cl- they're sort of quite closely linked. I mean, what we do in, in ergonomic as you mentioned, the physical impact does have a, a massive impact on on the mind and um, and your well being, and that's another sort of word um, that, that's sort of been been sort of buzzed <laughs> around a little bit. But it is important, and and we're as Wyvern and and, and I view we're doing an awful lot of work around health and well being as well. Sure. And I think they do go hand in hand. Um, Absolutely. But also, uh, I think we've seen, uh, and you just mentioned there where you do assessments. What we've done historically and what I've done personally um, as an assessor is you're working very reactively. Mm-hmm. Um, you're always addressing problems as they've they've already arisen. Ultimately, that's why they're seeing people like us. Absolutely. Um, but are you seeing a shift in, in more proactive assessments? And, uh, yeah. So so I always, I, I think that it there was a stage where it was very reactive. I think um, people working from home not feeling comfortable then taking that back on to their companies. But I experienced a lot of hesitancy from employees because they felt that they were in a period where they might be potentially made redundant. So mm. um, they weren't the making a fuss there, about it. it. Yeah. And a lot of it ended up being proactive because then they were like, well, I need to do something for myself mm. and I need to make sure that I'm getting the right equipment that I need. Um, and now I think that we're going to see an even bigger shift or it's probably already in that period where people are returning to work. Mm. So they're either returning on a hybrid basis where they're now looking at their home workstations and then looking at their office setups. Yeah. Um, but I think people are being more considerate around about things to, to do to make sure that they're feeling more comfortable. And the assessments that I did probably early, you know, just as the pandemic had, had hit, um, was people saying, well, what should I do? Like, you know, I'm just sat down mm. and you know what 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 do I do to to make sure that I'm not getting tired and you know I I'm not falling asleep where I need to you know be active and doing things like that this this never happened to me when I was at work but it's happening to me yeah, while I'm absolutely. at home um I, I, and it and you know I think the sad reality is that unfortunately it took a pandemic to make yeah. sure that people were were taking into consideration what they should do for themselves. And actually raising that awareness, wasn't it? I mean, pe- people may not even considered how they worked before. They may have, they may have gone, as you say, from the office environment where everything was was very uh, was very kind of controlled, if you like, and um, all very n- nicely aligned, and you had the right equipment. Then you go home and you literally get your laptop on your <laughs> on your sofa. Um, and I think then being put in that position at working at home all of a sudden people are adapting and people are actually more conscious and aware that, that actually this isn't the usual setup. Yes. I need to change my working practice. I need to look after my my physical health Absolutely. and mental health. Um, what sort of what sort sort of um, what sort of equipment do, would would you say has been the sort of big sort of increase from home working? Sure. So so I think um, the sh- the shift had been is that when when it came into the home, it becomes a lot more personal. Um, it becomes about mm. you know not only what is good for me but also what looks good in my home. Yeah. Um, and where space is an issue, there were some families that were able to obviously um, have a dedicated room for an office, and other people that were working in in a shared environment. Mm. Um, and a lot of what I saw was um, was makeshift advi- environments, yeah. and not by you know there was a, a, a small percentage of people that were you know using boxes to aid as a footrest, yeah. or you know using you know, books to stack up their monitors (laughs) monitors on the top. Exactly. But then on the other side, there was a lot of laptop risers, um, you know, or... um, 
a, a retrofit sit stand units yeah. where you know they're easy to move or I say relatively easy to move around yeah. where you've got a workstation set up which is small enough to to kind of fit and aid a, a good working um, day but also stuff that you can just pack away you've got extremes Evan you've got the you, you, I'm fortunate enough to have a, a, an office at home so I've, I've set that up and I, I should practice what I preach but, <laughs> but ultimately you've got the other end where as you say people are, are, are literally makeshift desks or working on a counter or and, and actually changing that environment to, to suit them and, and I think that's one thing we've seen through the lockdown is, is that people have been very kind of inventive in some of the things they've done. But also, on the other hand, they may have just absolutely embraced what, they, what they're doing. Absolutely. And, and I always, um, you know, during the beginning, I, I think anyone who works within ergonomics, the, the, the ideal solution is to always make sure you're educating someone about how yeah. to make the best of their situation. Um, and then obviously when tools are required, you're able to aid with that. Um, so originally I'd be talking to people about using ironing boards as yeah. um, sit stand units because, you know, easy to use, don't take up a lot of space, but, um, making sure that people are utilizing different areas of their house yeah. so I, I did assessments very early on and someone would be like you're going to tell me off like, <laughs> I'm sitting on the sofa for seven hours <laughs> and I'd be like look everything in moderation yeah. is okay for the body so you, you, our bodies are wonderful machines that are telling us when something's about to go wrong or when we're sitting for too long yeah. so people when they cross their legs mm, might get was, a twinge or yeah. you might get a, a little <laughs> sign to say that you need to, exactly. need to move exactly move now um, so it's it, it's good to actually move around if you or if you're able to to move around your house because if you're sat on a sofa for 15 minutes, I mean, it's not going to do a world of wrong no. to your body, is it? No. But it's the movement that our body craves. And um, there was a statistic that was um, that that was released that said um, after one hour of sitting, 95% of our fat burning enzymes just stop working. Mm, wow. So that's just with us, just you know, doing static work. You know, maybe so using our laptop. positions, not moving. Absolutely. Uh, and, and I think that's such a scary fact, because we, we all fall into certain habits and certain, um, you know, w periods of work where we're just sat there typing away. But we want to make sure that we're integrating movement and movement is what is key. So if you're working from your sofa, um, just do it for a short period of time. And then, mm, you know, change. Exactly. Yeah. Stand up and use your kitchen top to to give you the ability to, you know, put the pressure or, or allow it to, to balance balance that in your body equally across your feet mm. um standing is is great because when you're standing you fidget more mm. so you allow for the blood oxygen and circulation moving. yeah exactly you're more likely to fidget and and even in the office space i always used to say that you know fidgeting is probably really annoying for the person sat next mm. to you but you do your body a world of good yeah. and so in the home my biggest um tip to any home worker was to make sure you're moving as much as you can be dynamic in how you work because if you're in a set up where you're sat on a on a four-legged kitchen table uh, or uh, sorry on a four-legged kitchen chair mm. you need to make sure that you're actively keeping that those muscles invigorated and and keeping the blood flow going throughout your body yep. because when you're static that's what leads to fatigue and then fatigue leads to lack of productivity and it's, it's all a vicious cycle mm. um so for, for anyone who's actually struggling just make sure you're moving at least three to four times in an hour and i don't mean you know that's five to ten minutes no. away where you can you know just 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 get away but it's 30 to 60 seconds of you just check stretching yeah. you know we all check our phones when we're sitting down drink water tea when we're sitting down yep. those are the kind of things that you could be doing and hydration is important for a body as well isn't it absolutely and and you know a lot of the time even in offices people used to keep like massive water bottles yeah. at the desk and yep. they used to be like keep small cups because it means that you're um then you know moving, making sure yeah. that you're going to the kitchen getting water moving more and then, frequently exactly yeah. and and it and it's so essential but it, it's it's about making sure that you've got your workstation set up correctly for yourself and I'm a firm believer in that yeah. so even when people are working from home and they're not able to they, they're just using their laptop it's very inexpensive to get a laptop stand and a separate keyboard and mouse because ultimately you want to make sure that you again your vision and your reach mm. is in the right position so that you can actually sit and in, yeah. in a better position for your body and not making that problem any worse for instance as you mentioned there sort of reach and buying the wrong equipment can have that effect where maybe you're overextending to reach 
keyboards and mice that are in the wrong places or they're not quite right for the environment you're in. Absolutely. So it is important to match the equipment to the tasks you, you're doing. Um, and you mentioned, you touched on there as well that, that sedentary positions, um, we, we've moved on a long way, haven't we? Certainly in terms of product design. Um, the, the chairs we use now, if you are lucky enough to have a chair, an ergonomic chair in the office, or you're looking for one for home, yeah. what's, the, what's the things we need to look for? So, so I, the, the biggest pushback, I think, for people in offices were that they weren't sitting or utilising their chair properly. Mm. And I do assessments and they'd be sitting on a great chair mm. and they just wouldn't have had it fit to their body. So, of course, you know, you could have the best chair, but if it's not set up for you or exactly. you don't know how to use it, yeah. you're never going to be sitting properly. Um, and I use the example that when you sit in a car, if you drive, if someone else has used your car, moved around the mirrors or played around with the seat, the first thing you do, even if it's just to go down the road, you make you make changes so quickly. But for some reason, we come into work yeah. and all these features just seem Seems so abnormal, but we've probably been sitting in those in that yeah, chair for absolutely. far more longer, yeah. and we'll be sitting in the chair for seven hours a day at least, um, and we don't make those changes. So for me, um, one of the biggest features in a chair, other than the the height adjustment mm. in in a chair, is the seat depth. Yeah. And um, I guess that can cause a bit of controversy because I guess every ergonomist has a different pos- will, yeah. for, for a, a different feature that they prefer. But for me, um, the seat depth is very important because it, it affects the whole balance of the chair absolutely yeah. uh, and the thing is when we naturally sit um on a chair what we do is we sit on a chair and we don't sit into a chair mm. and that's the first problem yeah. but when we interact with the chair as soon as the back of our knees hits the front edge of the chair we sit down yeah. and sometimes you see people who've got a massive gap probably far probably like how i'm sitting right now and mm. um, have a gap between their own back and the back of the chair but that's just because they haven't adjusted the seat depth sure. so you're in an office environment and most most chairs are designed to fit the 5th to 95th percentile, which mm. is a large population of people, ranging from, let's say, someone who's about 5 foot to someone who's about 6 foot 2, 6 mm. foot 4. Um, so the seat depth is the main thing that, that needs to be altered because I'm only 5 foot. So if I'm sat on in a chair which has a seat depth adjusted or has a seat pan that's fit for someone who's mm. 6 foot 4, I mean, there's no way that I'm no. going to be able to sit <laughs> all the way back. So you want a seat depth that's designed, that's able to have that um, movability where you've got a two to three finger gap yeah. between the front edge of the chair and the behind of your knees and that's the kind of rule of thumb yeah. that provides you with good support so that you actually have good interaction with your own back and the backwards of the chair. Now, that's important as well isn't it and, and in terms of circulation as well you don't want anything kind of causing more problems in terms of stopping sort of supply through the back of your legs and things like that. Absolutely. Uh, and I find the same I mean I'm six foot one six foot one and a bit um, and if I sit on a chair that's 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 too short for me in the, in the seat depth, Some, I'm perching for me, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm not comfortable. Yeah, exactly. And I've not heard that analogy before, but yeah, I wouldn't get in the car. Um, I wouldn't be safe to drive a car that's too far forward and, and maybe and, and too reclined, or or vice versa. So I naturally adjust it. So it, it is the first thing I do when I sit in any chair. I'll adjust it quickly, and um, I think. I think what's really important as well is, is as you mentioned, movement. And, and chairs aren't uh, chairs have come a long way, and they encourage movement with the mechanisms that we've got available to us now. It's really important to you to, as you mentioned, utilize all the features of a chair. You can adjust them in so many different ways. Most yeah. have um, adjustment in the seat, in the in the seat depth, in the back height, uh, the height of the chair altogether, and that mechanism. Some people don't know that actually chairs will move. <laughs> exactly. And then they often think that, um, you know, you, 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 you show them a feature and they're like, wow, I didn't even know that existed. Mm. Um, and that's why education is so key um, because it's, it's very common for us because we work within the industry. We work within, you know, office chairs and all these equipment. So we know how it, how it gets used. But often when you come into an office space where, you know, you've got so many different people um it's just about training them how to use the chair properly which is such it's such a huge benefit but one of the first one of the the most i think understated work tools i think in an office space is a footrest and or a footstool i think that most people underestimate how it's worth and the reason i say that is is because the desk that we use, a traditional office desk, is designed to accommodate someone who has a sitting um, a, a sitting height of about 
six foot four. Mm. So what that means is a six foot four male can sit, you know, shoulders relaxed, elbows at 90 degree angles, thighs parallel to the floor, feet firmly on the floor, and be able to type at their desk without feeling the need to shrug their shoulders or mm. adapt their workstation yeah. because the desk is designed for them. But for anyone who's actually shorter than than six foot, if you're setting yourself up on a chair away from your desk and you set up, you know, yourself, you know, thighs parallel to the floor, feet firmly on the floor, and then pull yourself to your workstation. I mean, I'm five foot, so I really feel the struggle here. Mm. I'd be working up here. Yeah. So, so the footrest comes in really useful because it can either bolster the height. Yeah. Um, but I also say that it gives you that leverage. It gives you something to push off of because otherwise you're maybe struggling to move in, in a chair that's, that's, that's maybe a little bit um, different to what you're used to. Exactly. And, you know, um, for, for anyone who experiences any kind of um, lower limb circulatory issues, pregnant workers where you get to like the second to the tr- third trimester where you've got a lot of water retention in mm. your feet, a, a dynamic footrest where you're able to rock your feet back yeah. and forward passively makes those movements so that you don't have to think about it. Yeah. So, of course, um, you know, an introduction to, to a new workstation setup is always a little bit abnormal to begin with. That's just because it's new and we're creatures of habit. Yeah. However, when you've got a footrest in place and you're under the kind of six foot two threshold, um, a footrest is probably one yeah. of the best work tools. Um, and, and the second reasoning behind that is, is that most footrests come at, a, at an inclined or sloped position. Mm. So if you do drive, I know I keep relating everything back to the car today, but um, if you drive and you've got, you see the pedals in your car, they always keep your feet like this. Um, it's very unnatural for you to keep your feet in this position and kind of hoist your body up into mm. the upright position because naturally your body wants to recline. It wants to sit in a open angle at your hips and your pelvis. Yeah. And we can probably only sit upright for about five to 10 minutes. And the next posture we take after that is actually slumping forward. Yeah. So your body wants to sit in its neutral position, which is reclined. So it's not a slump position. It's not a slouch position. It's just reclined where your body is able to offload its own body weight to the backs of the chair. So what a dynamic or a, a reclined or an inclined footrest does, mm. is it keeps your feet in this position, but it forces you to actually sit back. Yeah. So that's, the, I, I, I often speak about chairs and then I go straight onto the footrest because I just think it's such an important... Ultimately, I mean, they're, they're, they're linked on it, hand in hand. You put your foot on the footrest, it pushes your shoulders back, pushes you into that reclined position, opens up pelvic angle, and it releases a lot of those pressures that are caused by kind of sedentary sitting. Absolutely. And that's, that is really, really important. And it, I think gone are the days, we had this conversation a little bit earlier, um, uh, but gone are the days when you maybe start a new job. And it used to be that there's, there's, there's your chair, there's your keyboard, there's your monitor, off you go, carry <laughs> on. Um, I, think t- I think attitude, there are still those attitudes, but attitudes are changing. Um, and going back to the ergonomic kind of definition, it should be that other way around. It should be that there's a new, you start a new job. Okay, well, how tall are you? How heavy are you? What sort of tasks are you doing? Let's fit the chair to the person. Let's fit the desk to the to the right height. Let's give all the equipment to hand without overstretching or anything like that. Definitely. And I, I think that is really important. I think attitudes are changing. There's still uh, an awful lot of work to be done, and that's part <laughs> of our job is to educate exactly. people. And um, and I spend an awful lot of time. Uh, sort of, it sounds really strange, but you teach people how to sit, and <laughs> I mean, it should be the most natural thing in the world. But using all the all all, all of the sort of features available to them on a chair or desk, even if, however kind of whatever level mm-hmm. that chair is, there's an awful lot you can do. Um, Definitely, and, and certainly re- sort of reverting back to the home working situation. Um, there's an awful lot people can do if they're still working from home or I think we've introduced things like hybrid working. Now we're seeing a lot of people split in their time. Absolutely. What are your top tips for so, people who are still working at home that maybe have or haven't got that, that equipment? So uh, my, my top tip will still be to make sure that you're moving because being dynamic within your space is not only, it, it, it needs to be done not only so that you're shifting position but also so you're shifting environments. Mm. Um, you know, going out so that you're getting a bit of fresh share um i i attended a um a seminar about in 2010 so very very early on in my ergonomics career and it was at 100 percent design and they were talking about the office design of the future so 10 years 2020 mm. and they were talking about people working from their gardens <laughs> and bringing their offices home working from home um and i was thinking oh this is so bizarre like 10 years like that's never Doesn't, gonna happen no. 
And here we are, 10 years on, people have home offices because they're working from home, you know, in their gardens. You know, there's a huge talk about biophilia. And now we've got, you know, plants and everything around us within that space. Yeah. And we're, we're in that position. There's, there's, we've seen that transition. Um, but I, I, I think that for, for, for most people, I think if you are working from home, the first thing is, is that make sure that you've got your workstation set up. Yeah. Um, if you're able to have like a dedicated space, just ensure that your 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 laptop is elevated. If you've got a laptop, if you've got a computer screen, then even great. Because making sure that you've got those vital things correct, you know, your eye line should meet the, the top two thirds of your monitor and keeping your keyboard and your mouse as close as you can mm. so that you are not, you know, over abducting your arms and over stretching. They're, they're such inexpensive tools, yeah. but they can make such a so huge... So simple. They can make such... Yeah, exactly. They can make such a such a big difference in, in how we work. Mm. Um, and then moving on to, like, the office space, um, hybrid working has changed because, you know, real estate was shrinking before... Um, you know, before COVID had hit. And now it's, you know, it's shrunk even more mm. because now you've got people working from home. So potentially where you'd be seeing a lot of companies, um, you know, designing spaces for, for you know, 100% of their workforce, it's now reduced substantially. Yeah. And unfortunately for the companies that have had these large spaces and now operating on a hybrid model, you have a lot of echoes. Yeah. And you've got people designing now for new ways of working. And, yeah. and to me, I mean, I think it's music to my ears because I've <laughs> always been, you know, yeah. uh, in favor of making sure people have different environments to work in for your mind and your body. Yeah. Um, but now companies are looking at acoustic panels for the wall and yeah. making sure that you're looking into that noise absorption. And I love seeing stuff like that. I love seeing soft seating being involved in the mix where people are able to touch base in different environments. Um, but one thing that I've seen drastically change in the last kind of, I think, two to three months where companies were really looking at the return to work um, side of things is there was a period before COVID where companies would design products to have a very nice aesthetic flair so all the chairs had to be the same desks had to be the same and now we're seeing a shift in that so we're now working with clients that are looking at different environments but yeah. looking at the person and looking into the fact that people are different and they have different requirements mm. so you know if they're not looking at one chair option they're looking at four so or that five different person-centered approach that we should be doing anyway with every with everybody um is now is now becoming a reality in terms of a lot of the clients that you're working with exactly um, and yeah, I think that's really important that, that we are putting people first, ultimately. Um, and, and hopefully we will get to the stage where we're not completely reactive. Um, a lot of what we're talking about today is very sort of proactive in exactly. terms of what we can do to prevent some of the injuries that, that, that come from static posture. Uh, and hopefully we've, we've maybe um, sort of... Uh, to, to sort of explain how people can do that for themselves um, and, and, uh, and also how companies can do that on a, a kind of a larger uh, sort of basis. So um, thank you so much, Suki, for joining us today. Thank you. Um, I, 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 uh, I find it really interesting and we could talk all day. But unfortunately, <laughs> um, we, we, we will be running out of time. But um, I, think, um, I, th I think everybody will, will, um, will sort of find that... that Really interesting, and if they've got any questions, then we're happy to, to 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 contact us, and we can we can advise people. So thank you very much, Suki, thank and um, join us next Tuesday at eleven o'clock for the next uh, episode of iView Live. <laughs>